tell you that one of the things that I've really thought a lot about in my own life is what I call a personal um, value system. And, you know, it's like, for me, it's an ethos. It's how I want to show up in the world, how I want to give to the world. I stumbled upon uh, a very famous quote last night, just scrolling through Instagram at the end of the day. Um, and it's, it's the quote we've heard many times, the Einstein quote, that you can't solve a problem from the same level of thinking that created the problem. And when I look at healthcare and women, I am so clear, I am so clear that we cannot have uh, elevate this discussion. We cannot solve the challenges that women are having with their health with the same conversation. The conversation has to change. And the paradigm I'm hoping we all step into and the conversations I hope we all have is that I'm not helpless. I'm in control. It's my responsibility. It's not uh, every single symptom that shows up in my body is a message from my body telling me how, what it needs. And my responsibility becomes understanding how to read those clues. The other, the other part of this taking responsibility back and what we're going to talk a lot about today is that it's also my responsibility to understand where I am hormonally so that whether I'm postmenopausal or I'm 35 years old trying to get my cycle so I can get pregnant, like I'm not a victim to, the, to my symptoms. I need to learn how to read my body. I need to learn how m the rhythm of my hormones, what kind of lifestyle I'm going to put with that. And that's the change of pa a pattern of thinking that if we could get all the women on the planet to start doing it, it will, it will change that. That's a mindset change that will change healthcare forever, for generations. I'm, I'm in control of my own health. And when I walk into my doctor's office, I deserve respect and I deserve to be heard and I deserve to be educated. And one of the greatest um, uh, compliments I can ever get when I, when, when I was working really closely with patients is when they told me they would walk into their doctor's office and they felt like an equal and they felt like they could speak their language. And that like, uh, like I've had, because of the hormone education, um, I've had so many patients come back to me and say, um, yeah, I walked in there and she was trying to give me some basic understanding of hormones. And I told her, I understand this. And then they were able to have a deeper conversation. So a really fun fact before we dive into all these hormones is that oxytocin comes in in waves during our menstrual cycle. So we're gonna talk about the menstrual cycle today for my postmenopausal women. I need you to just listen through because I will address what happens when you don't have a cycle, but you need to understand um, how it worked in a cycle and then I can we can expand out from that. So in a cycle, that first from day one going through day 15, you get these bursts of oxytocin. So wherever estrogen goes, oxytocin is like her, her, her best friend. So if we look at progesterone and estrogen are sisters, they're twins, they look the same, we call them the same, but they have vastly different personalities. What I want you now to think about when it comes to estrogen is she literally has, and I said this at the I Can Do It conference for those that you were there, she has a girl gang that she brings with her. She brings with her dopamine and serotonin and acetylcholine and glutamate and BDNF and oxytocin. And these are the neurochemicals that come with estrogen. And so when we are going into these states where we are getting big splashes of estrogen, like from day one to day 15 is really estrogen's moment, you are getting all of those other neurochemicals. And that honestly makes you a more compassionate and, and, and um, a empathetic human. 
um, men don't get that kind of estrogen uh, experience. And, and for men, just so you know, their major hormone, as we all know, is testosterone. And testosterone goes up into the brain and it converts into estrogen. So now I haven't done because my specialty, again, is not male hormones. But what I will tell you is that the difference is that the conversion happens in the brain. Whereas for women, as estrogen is building, 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 in comes oxytocin. When estrogen peaks, serotonin peaks. Uh, estrogen goes in the, to the five estradiol specifically, the most powerful form of estrogen goes in to the 5-HT2A receptor site for serotonin and activates serotonin. And it, it activates dopamine. And she brings in glutamate that is like, helps you hold on to new information. And she stimulates acetylcholine, which helps you with memory. Um, and she brings in uh, BDNF, which helps your brain grow. So she has this girl gang that comes with her. And that is part of our superpower. We, men don't have that girl gang of neurochemicals as much. So there's a different neurochemical reaction that's happening. So I say that to say to my, um, to, well, twofold, when I, when I think about this girl gang of estrogen, if you are a healthcare practitioner um, that, and our female, I just want to tell you, like, we need your voice. I, we need you in the system. We need you to take this information and teach it because you have the superpowers that can really start to change women's health care. So if you're feeling shy, if you're feeling you're like, I don't what you know, I'm not worthy. I want you to say you are completely worthy because your hormones demand that you're worthy. I, if you have any self doubt in your head, I want you just to put it away. I, I need you to lift up and I need you to get into that place where you understand how powerful you are and your voice and your heart and your ears and your hormones and all of these neurotransmitters. The world needs you because you are locked and loaded with incredible superpowers. So put any doubt away. So. I'm going to go through the menstrual cycle. I want to talk about personalities. You don't have one metabolism. Let's just be really clear. You have two metabolisms. Another word that we use for metabolism is energy system. How does your body get energy? And it gets energy from two different ways. One, it gets energy from the food you eat. We call that glucose. So when you, different, you eat something, it breaks down, you get a glucose response and your body needs glucose. So check this out. You need glucose, 50% of the fuel source for your brain is glucose. The other 50% is ketones. Time to go to the other fuel source. And the only way you can get a ketone is by burning fat. You're supposed to metabolically switch in and out and that is the art of fasting now for for men those of you that have men in your life um they still have to metabolically switch they just don't switch according to their hormones for us we're lucky enough that our hormones will tell us what they need and estrogen if she could talk she would say to you I love when you are insulin sensitive. I love when you keep glucose down. I'm a partner with ketones. Bring me some ketones and I'm going to be able to perform at my best. So anytime estrogen is coming in, having this fat burning place is incredibly beneficial. Progesterone, it wants to tell you in completely the opposite. She's like, look, okay. Every, since the day you got your period, I have been sending you signals and it's called carb craving and it's called chocolate craving. And whenever I was about to make my appearance, I gave you these cravings so that you could bring glucose up. So I had enough ingredients to be able to make a get peak so that I could shed the uterine lining. Okay, then we move into ovulation. 
And when we move into ovulation, ovulation happens somewhere about day 11 to day 15. We, those of you that are ovulating, you ovulate at different times every month. And did you know that you ovulate from different ovaries every single month? So it's always alter your ovaries. Not, it's not like it's coming out of the same ovary every single month. But this ovulation window, I, I geeked out on this for months. And I was like, this is a crazy hormonal time. We have estrogen at our peak. Testosterone peaks during ovulation. So whether you are trying to get pregnant or not, I'm sorry, testosterone peaks because we are bi bio biologically programmed to reproduce. So the human body has a major priority system. The first priority is survival. This, and that is primarily for men. Well, it's for both men and women, but women have two priorities. We have survival and reproduction. So every ovulation, you started to get testosterone coming in, it peaks, and now libido's up, so you'll reproduce. Oxytocin also hits her peak, so you feel like connecting. So literally from day 11 to day 15, 16, you are locked and loaded with, with your all of your hormones. You are a superior human, but honor the fact that we are sophisticated humans that have this, this symphony of hormones. So then around day 19, we start to see progesterone build and progesterone, like I mentioned, wants you to bring glucose up. It's actually women gathering together to build homes for mothers who are, don't have a roof over their head in Mexico. So finding Sophia, thank you for what you're doing for women in the world. And thank you for those of you who are donating or volunteering and supporting this incredible nonprofit. When progesterone comes in, she brings with her a whole bunch of GABA and that calms you. Now, I bet you're asking yourself like, well, that doesn't make sense because the week before my period, I feel so irritable. The reason you are irritable the week before your period is because progesterone also wants, if she could talk to you, she would be like, and again, I'm going to apologize for swearing, but I don't know another way to say this. Progesterone, if she could talk to you, would say, sit your down, learn boundaries, learn no start to recover, stop trying to run a mar marathon, stop trying to fast, stop trying to do your personal best in the gym, stop trying to skimp on sleep. I am demanding that you give me more carbs and you rest and recover. We were meant to rest and recover the week before our, our period. And, and how we know this is that when cortisol goes high, progesterone becomes shy. She's like, this is a stressful environment. I don't have enough glucose, I'm out. This is such an important point. So when we look at the complete cycle, I look at it like the first half is my extroverted version of me showing up and estrogen and her girl gang. And I can just, I can be the superwoman I want to be. I can run as hard as I want. I can work as hard as I want. I can skimp on sleep. Like estrogen's not very sensitive to cortisol. So I used in my perimenopausal moments, those 10 days. Now you hit ovulation and all of a sudden your superpowers appear. So like testosterone, you know, I went to my trainer during that time and I was like, I think I should lift heavy weights every single day because now I have testosterone. Why don't we do legs on one day and abs on the other and arms on the other during my ovulation window? And this is something actually Tony Horton and I developed a, a, a program called Power Sync 60, looking at the, the exercise cycle needed for women. And then I came out of ovulation. I was like, back to my fasting. I love fasting. I'm going to keep fasting. And then day 20, I was like, I'm not going to fast. I'm going to eat more nature's carbs. I'm going to practice saying no. I'm going to do yoga. I'm going to hike. I'm going to chill out. That's how we were designed to be. Okay, where are my gals that are struggling with hormonal imbalance? Bloated, feeling like you're not making progress with weight loss. You need to add these foods in so that you can support better hormonal health. There is a lifestyle that estrogen wants you to live, and there's a lifestyle that progesterone wants you to live.